All right. What's up, folks? Doing some side work, and I thought I would uh, continue where we left off with uh, Matthew chapter six. I'm gonna have to keep it short tonight, but we're just gonna go through and like like before, like I said. Good. Yeah. All right. This is part two, Matthew chapter six. Um, Beware of doing your kind deeds before men in order to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Um, that's called hypocrisy. Um, thus, when you do a kind deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the congregation and in the streets to be praised by men. And truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a kind deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your kind deed shall be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret shall himself reward you openly. That's, uh, that's about the half of it. Anyway. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the congregations and on the corners of the streets, to be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your secret place, and having shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. And when praying, do not keep on babbling like the nations, for they think that they shall be heard by their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is the way you should pray. Our Father who is in the heavens, let your name be set apart. Let your reign come, let your desire be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the wicked one. Because yours is the reign and the power and the esteem forever. Amen. So here we are being taught by Messiah just how to pray. Short and sweet, to the point. Don't waste a lot of time running on at the mouth, being windy with your words. Just get to the point. He knows what you need. Just ask for it and you will receive. But, uh, anyway, I'm not going to belabor this too much. Uh, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father shall also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespass, neither shall your Father forgive your trespass. When you fast, do not be sad-faced like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that they appear to be fasting to men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Do that so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on the earth, where the moth and the rust destroy, and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart shall also be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore the, your eye is good, all your body shall be good. But if your eye is evil, all your body shall be darkened. And if then the light that is within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Hmm? What are we talking about here? This is a Hebrew idiom. The good eye means to be generous, while the evil eye means to be stingy. So, think about that a minute. No one is able to serve two masters. Let's see, this, this, this moves with what he's about to say next. He's not talking about literally your eye. He's talking about well, I think we, let's not belabor it. 
No one is able to serve two masters. You will even, either he shall hate one and love the other, or else he shall cleave to one and despise the other. You are not able to serve both Elohim and Mammon, personification of money. Anybody growing up in this culture knows exactly what that means. Because of this I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or drink, about, or about your body, what you shall put on. It is not life. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the heaven, for neither, neither do they sow nor rape, nor gather into the storehouses. Yet your heavenly Father does feed them. Are you not worth more than they? And which of you, by worrying, is able to add one cubit to his lifespan? So why do you worry about clothing? Note well the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And I say to you that even Shlomo in all his esteem is not dressed like one of these. Hmm. It's funny, I was just thinking about Solomon. But if Elohim so clothes, clothes the grass of the field, which exists today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more you, O oh, you of little belief? Do not worry then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For these, all these the nations seek for, and your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these. But seek first the reign of Elohim and his righteousness, and all of these shall be added to you. Do not then worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow shall have its own worries. Each day has enough evil of itself. Does that not sound like the Proverbs or like the Psalms? Hmm? Because I can tell you that wisdom came straight from those words. Though he may not have said it exactly, as a matter of fact, he may very well have said it more eloquently than even the Proverbs, or even the book of Ecclesiastes written by the wise Shlomo himself. These are things to ponder. These things didn't just come out of thin air. Well, in a sense, they kind of did. <laughs> but. We are living by this bread. We are living by this word. This word we are given. All of it. From the beginning to the end. Every blessed word of it. None of these things came into being on their own. None of these sayings came as if it was some new revelation. It was simply insight on the thing that already was, was spoken and thus written. These are many things to consider and very weighty should you choose to receive them. But it is only an evidence that the so-called New Testament only seeks to magnify the so-called Old Testament. These things are not separate from each other. They are consistent and whole. We'll pick it up tomorrow, folks. Have a lovely evening.